Lesson 155. Gracias. Okay, Antonio. Uh, gracias is an idiom, is it not? Yes, Bill. Does it have a literal meaning that you could tell us about? No, it's just a way of expressing gratitude. So I guess you could say that both the word gratitude and the Spanish word gracias probably come from the same word originally. Well, when I see the word gracias, it reminds me of the English word uh, grace. Mm -hmm. I wonder if that has anything to do with it. Probably. It all comes down to coming from uh, the same root, probably in Latin. In Latin, the way you would say thank you is gratias tibi ago. So I think that gracias may be descended from that Latin phrase, gra mm -hmm. gratias tibi ago. Mm -hmm. Literally, gratias tibiago means I give thanks to you. Mm -hmm. So would you say that the English word gratitude comes directly from that Latin word? It, yes, definitely. Gratitude comes from the Latin word that's in that phrase, gratias tibiago. So yes, this all comes from the same mm -hmm. root. In Latin, the word gratia means thanks, among other things. Antonio, uh, we know that para means for, but... When we want to thank someone for something, we don't say gracias para this or that. We say gracias por this or that, right? Mm -hmm. That's correct, Bill. Why would you say por instead of para? What's the difference? Well, Bill, in this situation, when thanking somebody for something, we already know that for can either mean para or por. Well, when thanking somebody, you just use por as opposed to para. So just learn that when thanking somebody, don't use para. Just use the, the second form of for, which is por. Gracias por la comida. Thank you for the food. Antonio, at the very end of this lesson, we learn uh, de nada, which means you're welcome. Uh, that's an idiom too. Can you tell us a little bit about uh, de nada? Well, de nada just means you're welcome. But uh, if you want to know the literal translation that really means of nothing. So it's like somebody thanks you for something. Thank you for the food. And they just want to be polite and nice and humble about it. They just say, oh, you're thanking me for nothing, of nothing. So that's what that's what really means literally, of nothing. Of nothing, you are thanking me. Th that's a way of saying of being humble about it. But in English, you don't say of nothing or for nothing, or you could say for nothing, but most people would say you're welcome. Okay, let's go over our exercises together and get some practice. In exercise number one, gracias means thank you. In number two, de nada is an idiom that means you're welcome. In number three, gracias means thank you. Por la comida means for the food. And mama means mom. So number three says, thank you for the food, mom. And number four, de nada is an idiom that means you're welcome. And mi hijo means my son. So number four says, you're welcome, my son. And number five, gracias means thank you. Por la ropa means for the clothes. And papa means dad. So number five will say, thank you for the clothes, dad. In number six, de nada means you're welcome, and mi hija means my daughter, so you're welcome, my daughter. In number seven, nosotros necesitamos means we need, mas comida means more food, and por favor means please. So number seven says, we need more food, please. In number eight, we have a me gusta type of statement. Los huevos is the subject, that means the eggs. Gustang is the verb, that's third person plural, to go along with los huevos. So the subject and verb will say, the eggs are pleasing, les means to them, and a mis hermanas means to my sisters. Of course, the word no is negating everything. So literally, number eight might say something like this, the eggs are not pleasing to them, to my sisters. But really what it says is a general statement, my sisters do not like eggs. In number nine, we have a question. The subject of the sentence is los huevos. That means the eggs. The verb is gustang. So los huevos and gustang together will say, the eggs are pleasing. Te means to you. 
And ati also means to you. If this were not a question, it might literally say, the eggs are pleasing to you, to you. But since it's a question, it really is going to say, are the eggs pleasing to you, to you? Or do you like eggs? In number 10, we have another me gusta sentence. Los huevos is the subject. That means the eggs. Gustang is the verb. That's third person plural. So los huevos and gustang will say, the eggs are pleasing. Me means to me. Then we have the clarifying pronoun a. A mi means to me. The first no in the sentence is the answer to the question. And the second no, that is negating everything. So number 10 literally might say something like this. No, the eggs are not pleasing to me, to me. But what it will really say is, no, I do not like eggs. <laughs>